This is Shreya Chakravarti. Really honored to be part of this program while giving a tribute to Swami Vivekananda. At this time, when everyone is really worried due to COVID, we should follow the path shown by Swami. And nurture our culture to keep ourselves optimistic and I'm a passionate follower and contributor of Indian culture in the form of performance, which is dance, more precisely Indian Odyssey classical dance. My journey started from my childhood when I did not have any idea what are the different forms of dance and how it differs. But I knew one simple thing. I love dance as it portrays the emotion and the And the inception of my journey started from my school Ramakrishna mission. After that, I got a chance to learn under the guidance of Guruma Srimati Monalisa Kosh, one of the leading exponents of Odissi dance. Guruma was the disciple of Guru Padma Vibhushan Kiluchiran Mahapatra. If we have to know a little bit of the history of Odissi dance, then we have to talk about Guru Tiluchiran Mahapatra. We can say he created the modern form of Odissi dance, which we are following and carrying the legacy today. If we now want to go more deep in the history, like when this classical dance form started, it was around 2nd century BC and originated from Odisha. Now, if we talk about different styles in Odisha dance, mainly there are three Mahari, Nartaki, and Gopi. In Odisha dance, one of the main posture is Tribhangi and Cho, using the head, chest, and pelvis area. There are 63 hastas in modern Odissi dance to express the meaning of a given act. Odissi dancers are colorfully dressed with makeup and jewelry. I hope this small background will help you to understand the culture and the history of Odissi dance. Coming back to my journey, when I started my new life in the United States, I got an opportunity to perform in Consular General of India in Yoga Day. And while we are tributing this program to Swamiji, it is more relevant and I feel we should promote yoga specially now when we are locked down in our home. After that, there were many occasions when I got a chance to represent Indian culture. When the Lions Club organized a parade to celebrate the 100th annual convention. Moreover, I tried to give back something to the community in the form of fundraising program. Numerous fundraising programs arranged by Bhatsuka Ashram Shanghu, Vivekananda Vedanta Society and Hindu Heritage Mandir. Parallelly, nurturing the arts through performing in different community programs arranged by Vishwa Hindu Parishad, Vivekananda Vedanta Society, Hindu Temple of Greater Chicago, Simply Vedic, Canadian Jat Association, Chicago University, Taste of India, Bengali Drama Group, and many more. In the meantime, when I came to Canada, I met different people from different cultures. And then I felt to extend my interest just beyond my own dance. I have learned Rajasthani dance and Pasto dance as well. 
to give background about pastorates it was introduced in afghanistan and it is a tribal dance form as a result i was invited by iranian community to perform in the tirgan festival which was definitely a different experience also along with these dances i always cultivate our own folk dance and rabindranath as well in the end i can say there is no limit to learning new things and we should keep ourselves motivated now we will see some glimpses of my journey as i mentioned earlier before that i want to conclude by quoting swami vivekananda you have to grow from the inside out none can teach you none can make you spiritual there is no other teacher but your own soul